Howdy folks, Tech Texan here, bringing you Life is Feudal. I believe we're on part four of this tutorial series, and we are now in the nighttime session here. <laughs> I guess we're not going to be able to see very well, so we're not going to do any mining, uh, at least not to my knowledge. Uh, we're going to try to take care of a few things. I've been feeling just a little under the weather today. Uh, probably just change of weather, no fever or anything to worry about. But anywho, uh, before I started the recording, I decided to go ahead and build another uh, bark box right next to the furnace. So I could place all these uh, metal plates that I made in the previous video and also the rest of my stone. Now, if I were to inspect this, you will probably also take note that it has a different, uh, let's see, was it durability or quality? Let's see, what is it? Yeah, you have a different durability. You have 15,200 durability. But the first one I made, because I was using lower quality bark, I have a lower durability. Now, bark boxes aren't really going to get damaged, per se. However, when it comes to furnaces, it's a different story. Furnaces, they do lose their durability over time. So let's go ahead and inspect this. I've only used it the once during the video, and it's already gone down uh, nearly 200 on its durability. So I can only use it so many times before I'm going to have to construct a new one. So always take note that some of these things you're just going to have to uh, rebuild. Now bloomeries, they go down probably the quickest. Uh, so you want to make sure that your bloomery is high quality off the bat. So once you get to that point, you'll definitely want high quality objects. Now another thing I noticed, um, I was picking apples off a tree and I noticed that we have what's called mulberry trees. Mulberry trees are going to be, uh, I won't say an important one, but later on, it's certainly going to be a plus because mulberry trees, you can actually farm it for silkworm cocoons. Why? Well, silk. Yes, you're going to use silk. You can actually build a throne. Silk is one of the ingredients to make a throne for kingdoms. So make sure you uh, find these mulberry trees. They're really good to have. Uh, and of course, that the usual apple tree, you want to definitely gather some apples so you can stay... Uh, keep your hunger taken care of. However, uh, later on you're going to be cooking food such as meats and using vegetables and things like that because you can obtain other properties from foods other than just taking care of your hunger. For now though, we're not going to worry about that just yet. We're going to just make sure we keep an eye on our hunger and just eat on apples for a while and if worse comes to worse, eat some roots, eat some taproot. Okay, so now that we have furnace, a couple of bark boxes, there was one thing that I probably should have done, maybe even the first or second video, and that's we need to create a little campfire and a little sleeping bag. So we're going to go ahead and just create that on the beach here because it's such a pleasant place to put it. Next to my pile of rocks. And that's going to be done under forestry. So I'm going to create a camp. And we'll just do a sleeping bag first. Let's see. Hmm. No, I don't want to rotate it that way. Oh, I thought that was cut off. I guess not. All right. Well, we'll just leave it there. And of course, as usual, it puts a sign saying, hey, this is where you have to construct your material. And all we need are branches and plant fiber, so that doesn't take very long at all. And you know, before I even start collecting branches and plant fiber, I might as well start construction on the campfire and see how many total resources I need. Alright, we will go ahead and just slap it right here. Yeah, that looks good. And for your campfire, you only need five branches. So the campfire is probably one of the easiest things to build, aside from tools. One of the things I also want to get into on this video is paving roads. That will be very, very important. All right, so here we got a maple tree. 
Let's uh, snap off branches. We need four for the sleeping bag, and I've already forgotten how many I need for the other one, so we'll just assume we'll need a total of ten. I think that's the last branch. I don't think I have any more branches on this tree. Oh, I do. Okay. How many do I have total? I thought it said three. I guess I must have read, misread that. Oh, that's it. Four. All right. So let's hunt down some others. We need branches. That's a mulberry tree. I'm going to leave that alone. Let's get some awesome oak. I'm going to go ahead and inspect this oak and see what quality this one is. I may have already picked off of this one. No, I haven't. Okay. It's a medium. we got 12 branches. Quality is only nine. So it's a low quality oak. I probably don't want to keep it, so I'm going to eventually cut it down and just take its wood. So branches, plant fibers, uh, bark, those are very easy resources to obtain at the beginning of the game. Clay is easy to find as long as you know where to look on the map, and I've already demonstrated where to find that in previous video. I haven't even been counting how many branches I have. Okay, I have more than ten. Okay. And you will need lots of plant fiber, believe it or not. Lots. We may even get into building chicken coops. All right, so we go ahead and dump our branches in here. Now, I'm placing the branches in the construction field work here, but you can go ahead and halfway build something. So it's okay to put, <coughs> excuse me, partial resources into your construction. So when I go to create a camp, it shows it already applied the four branches after I went ahead and clicked on build, but I still need the plant fiber to finish the job. The campfire, however, we're going to need five. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and construct and our campfire will be ready. But we still need to use fuel to keep the fire burning. There we go. Since we're in this nighttime point, we'll go ahead and just dump one of my billets in here. I don't mind. Why not? We'll just turn on the light and it'll just be a little beacon for me to follow as I work in the dark. Alright, so we need some plant fiber. Let's go ahead and grab some. Nature's lore, gather plant fiber. And the options that I have keep continually growing as I level up. Now, before the recording, as I said, I went to gather some apples, and I noticed that I leveled up my farming by just gathering apples. And yes, you do level up on your farming just from gathering apples. Um, and I have already unlocked animal lore from doing that. So we can actually uh, breed small animals and coops and clean them and so forth. So we do want to get into some farming. Probably not in this video, but in a future video. For now, we're just sticking to basics. So already, with just some basic resources, we have a campfire. We have, we're have we about to have a sleeping bag. We already have two bark boxes. And we also have a furnace. And all these are really good start. And then along with all these tools that I'm wearing on me. I forget how many I need. I think I only need four. It's okay to have a couple extra. Maybe I'll make a fishing pole. Fishing is okay, but it's not the most efficient way to get food. One would assume it would, naturally, but... There are other ways of doing it. And there we are. So now I have a sleeping bag. And I can inspect it.
and shockingly it almost has the durability of my bark box and you can repair uh, some of the durability so you still have repair options however making repair kits is, can be a little pricey so I wouldn't even bother so for farming I can prepare different foods at my campfire and as you can see I need beef and flintstone if I'm to make a beef steak uh, similar with bacon I need pork there's chicken eggs you can make boiled eggs uh, boiled potatoes cabbage stew fried beast codfish if you want to uh, do some fishing get some codfish and just mix some branches branches with it cook it right here you can have some of that same thing with herring salmon trout and porridge you know what I just might since I had this plant fiber let's see about making a fishing pole Uh, primitive tool, fishing pole, there we go. Oh, I forgot it. <laughs> Whenever you exit out of that window, it will stop crafting. Okay, there we go. So now, I can do a little fishing. And it's amazing how one stick made that gigantic fishing pole. And just right click in the water anywhere and just start fishing. However, if you find a hundred quality spot, you can actually get hundred quality water. Uh, and I believe also hundred quality fish. Now in order to get that quality water, if I'm not mistaken, you need to have hundred quality dirt right underneath it so if you find 100 quality dirt just run up to a shore place the dirt down put like a sign next to it so you can so you know where it is and or a bark box or some some way of indicating where it is and then all you do is fish that spot and you'll get 100 quality fish now I didn't catch anything it takes a while Most likely because I need to get my fishing hunting up, which is currently at zero. It would probably be more efficient for me to go kill a wild animal than to fish for something. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the fishing pole. Just wanted to do it for demonstration sakes. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, oh, what was the other thing I was going to do? Yeah. We need to create a snare. So, we need to make a snare trap. A snare trap requires apple for bait, 10 plant fiber, and this is where it gets a little repetitive. 10 plant fiber for every snare trap. A snare trap can get you chickens. So we're going to sit here and gather some plant fiber for a little bit. And with these chickens, we can certainly have some chicken meat. But if I build a coop, I can get these chickens to multiply and lay eggs for me. So you'll definitely need a chicken coop. Plus, cleaning a chicken coop will also provide fertilizer. Fertilizer provides you a means to improve the soil of your farming land. So we're going to start getting into different things that are sort of multi-purpose. And you'll find that whenever you are in a town in this particular game, that you provide assistance for multiple people. So, for example, the blacksmith not only has to make tools, but he's got to also make the weapons. So, he provides town militia arms, as well as their tools. The herbalist, which is the one I normally play, um, 
gathers the resources to make the ingredients needed for several things, such as flux. Flux is used to make uh, quite a bit there. You can make mortar, which is to help you build your big castle walls, and you also need it for you need flux for, uh, I believe, making steel. So the blacksmith needs it. Uh, you'll find that flux uh, it takes a lot of work to get flux, so or at least in the in the quantity that you need it. And we might go over a little bit of herbalism today. Now that I've leveled up, all right. So I got more than enough plant fiber here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a snare. I'm gonna go ahead and craft one. Now the snare trap will not work if it is too close to town, so if there's a lot of commotion, your snare trap is not going to capture anything. You'll notice if I right click on it, that just drops it. But you don't want to just drop your snare trap. Alright, so I'm going to put this... Uh, I'd say this is far enough. We're going to set a snare. There we go. Now you'll notice this thing is really, really hard to see. So you want to make sure that you put it in a spot where you remember where it is. I can easily remember this particular clearing, so it's not a big problem. Now the sun's going to be coming up soon, and you'll probably notice a huge amount of lag when it happens. This is an old bug that's been in this game for a while. What happens is, all the trees at the same particular time of morning grow up one spurt, which tends to slow down the entire server. <coughs> So, if you have this problem, don't worry, it happens in the morning all the time. Hopefully they'll fix this problem, they'll try to help remedy this by, I don't know, creating different growth spurt times, maybe kind of ease the, yeah, there it goes, I'm totally stalling out. I'm trying to spin around right now and can't do it, oh, well, now I'm spinning around a little. <laughs> well, it's not the view I wanted, really. Okay. And that's it. It seems to have finished. So now that we set a snare trap, we've made a fishing pole, we've taken care of a couple of different food sources. And again, apples can still satisfy us until then. Now we're going to get into... Herbalism. Alright, first of all, I don't need all these equipped while doing herbalism. But, I do need another tool. Now, I currently have some plant fiber, but I am currently lacking sticks. So let's go grab some sticks. I think I'll go ahead and get some sticks off the mulberry tree. And what we need is a primitive sickle. The primitive sickle is going to help us cut down these herbs that we need. Oh, we need some flint. Now remember what I said about flint. You can actually get flint from piles of rocks. Now this is technically not a pile of rocks, but we have a pile of rocks down here. So that way I don't have to run all the way up the mountain. There we go. Alright. Believe I only needed one. Yep. 
and let's make our sickle. Let's go ahead and equip the sickle. Okay, so here's what's really cool about the herbalism, and this is what I kind of liked about this game. Now, for those of you who are Skyrim fans, or, you know, you played the Oblivion game, or the uh, Elder Scroll games, and you did all the, uh, uh, wasn't really called herbalism, but the alchemy. Well, in the alchemy, you would always find these ingredients. Hang on, let me search for herbs. Now, out here, you don't just immediately pick it. Here, you have to search for it, and you'll see there some plants actually kind of showed up. They're hard to see here, but there's actually an herb right here that showed up, and I had the option to gather it. And there was a couple others that popped up. So you kind of have to pay attention where they pop up. And also take note, it takes a long time to gather these herbs. I didn't even successfully gather it. I've damaged the plant's useful parts. The beginning of this will be a struggle, but eventually as you level up on your gathering, then you'll do fine. But so far, I haven't gathered anything from this. You will have multiple fail attempts to begin with, but as I said, as you level up, it works out better. Eventually, you'll succeed every time, um, but What's really tricky, and as I was getting into, so if you remember the Elder Scroll, you would just pick up your plant. Well, now I just picked up one, and it has a name. It has an icon. And most people would say, well, I don't want to sit here and learn all the properties, so I think I'm just going to look it up on Wikipedia. You cannot do that in this game, and here's why. The properties of these plants are randomized per player. So if you're on a server with multiple players and one of them discovers all the properties for the plants, they will not be the same properties for you. So they can't really share, per se, the properties of a plant. Now this also works to your advantage. So, if you find, say, five different plants that give properties of made, making flux, and then all the other 30 or some odd, I think it was actually 50 or 60 some odd uh, number of plants, um, if those don't make it, you can give those to your buddies, but five of those may give them flux. So, you're going to be sharing your uh, plants and herbs a little differently. Don't take that out of context. So I'm going to continue gathering herbs. So now I have two of these guys. And you can see I'm leveling up on my gathering, which is kind of helping to speed up just a little bit my ability to gather these things. I did not succeed. Sometimes it's hard to click on these plants. I find that holding down the right click button and then carefully maneuvering your mouse till you hit the sweet spot and then let up on the right click, then you're good to go. Same goes for left clicking, but it's kind of hard to see the highlight. Probably best in first person view. I don't know why I'm doing third person. And I'm not kidding, I've spent hours doing this before. Oh, see, yeah, I just left click. That didn't really help me any. Of 
Come on, man. Gather that herb. He is not succeeding. Well, I will worry about that later. For now, what I need to do is get my mortar and pestle. Now, you can operate this thing. Oh, never mind. I guess you can't. There we go. So I moved it to my inventory. Now I'm going to mix preparation. Since I have two items, I'm going to go ahead and see and mix if I get any effects. And sure enough, I did. Iron wheel preparation. So what I just made is this powder that I can mix later on with water and bottle to create a potion that increases, I guess, the will. Raises willpower by one. And you'll end up with a lot of these. And I just eventually assume put it in storage because you're going to end up with a lot of it. So already we mixed uh, two ingredients and came up with a property. You're going to be doing this for a good long while. And you can't even get the advanced properties until you level up your herbalism. So there are certain things that you cannot yet make even though you may have the ingredients. And you won't be able to do everything until level 90. The double effect preparations, actually level 60 is what you really want to aim for because you definitely want that flux. The naphtha is also really good to have as well. The naphtha is going to help you make torches. You can make flaming arrows and eventually I think grenades or something along those lines. So naphtha is sort of the fire property type of mixture that you definitely want to make. And I do believe I finally gathered that herb. That only took forever and a half. Now, as you can see, it's difficult to find the herbs out here as you search for them. But there's a little trick to this, and I will show you. Assuming it still works. So let's say I don't want to sit here and do this in the bush where I can't really see what I'm doing. I'm going to do a little terraforming. I'm going to grab about, oh, I don't know, 60 dirt. But I'm going to go to a nice flat beach where there's not that many plants around. I'm going to go ahead and pour this right here. Oh, I don't have enough there. I'd have to dump some more dirt in order to have the option. But, anyways, you can dump a good pile of dirt here. And then you can do a little bit more uh, of your searching. And what will happen is the, pant the plants will pop up around in the sand, giving you a chance to use that. And there may be a wider area that I have to place it in. I'm not entirely sure, but that is how that works. Like I said, that herbalism it is going to be important, so it's good to start that off early. It's not going to be much use to you. You're going to feel like it's a waste of time at first, but later on, it will certainly be worth it. And I did not mean to inspect that. So we're just going to dump our items in here. Now what is nice is that the herbs do not take very much weight. So they weigh 0.1 stones, whereas a box can hold up to 50 stones worth. So uh, a bark box can hold tons of these things. And have your friends help you find more flux, because you will certainly need it. Okay, well, I covered the campfire, we got ourselves a sleeping bag, we have a snare set up, let's go see if anything's been trapped yet. Probably not, sometimes it takes about a day. An in-game day, that is. 
Let's see, where did I put it? There it is. Okay, so it hasn't been set off yet. I'm going to go to first person view. You'll know it's set off if it's no longer flat and it's just a pouch hanging down. So, if you're still not sure, you could just inspect it. It just shows it's deployed. Okay, good. It's deployed, so we'll just continue waiting. So we have our campfire, we have our sleeping bag, an extra bark box, and we've already started on some uh, herbalism. Let's see what else we can work on here. Oh, let's pave some roads. Yeah. Now to pave roads, you're going to have to build a hammer. Alright, we've got plant fiber, but I am in need of sticks. Here, let me take that out of there. You know what? I guess I'll go ahead and carry all that. Always needing sticks. Creating another primitive tool. The primitive hammer. You need four flint, three plant fiber, and one branch. Alright, we now have a hammer. Let's go ahead and equip the sucker. Now I'm going to keep the shovel on, this, on my back, and there's good reason why. Because to pave your roads, you're going to need rock. And you're going to get plenty of rock doing your mining. So, one thing that's good to do when you have two people, on, at least on your server or in your town, is one person can mine the rock along with the metal and the other person can dig up the rock and use it to pave your roads. So let's go ahead and go to ground level. Let's go ahead and right click on that so we can make that our default action. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pave a road all the way from my mine to my furnace. Because I walk slow enough as it is. Maybe, let's see, should I start at the furnace or the mine? We'll start at the mine. Now, the advantage of the roads is that you do get a 25% uh, speed walk bonus. So you can walk 25% faster. We'll start right here. And it's under construction, and it's just paved. And this will also help level up your skill pretty quick. Currently at 29. It's probably going to give me a few points, maybe. Oh, construction was not raised. Prerequisite skill is too low. So I need to do more materials preparation in order for me to do this. Wow. Well, for the level up to happen. I was still able to pave a road, and so you can see a small section has been made here. So let's pave this spot right here. And you can see how much rock it takes up. It takes up about 30 rock. And you can do this throughout your entire town. It's nice to have a village with paved roads. People can get around a lot quicker and they'll be a lot more productive. So you'll notice a little slow down there. So running downhill. So yes, I'm not going to spend the entire video paving all the way to the furnace. I'll probably do that off recording. However, 
you now know what some of the things that you can do right now to get going. Go ahead and pave those roads and make it look nice and neat. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to build a hut. But I think we're going to build a hut in the next video. We'll worry about that then. So that way we can have a roof over our heads and have a nice view when we wake up in the morning. So with that said, y'all come back now, you hear? Bye.